We have already seen the Pali Papa Temple, which was built a hundred years ago and is now in ruins, in the thick of the forest. Alvarkadayan came to know about the conspiracy of Ravidasan and others while hiding here. Now Vandiyadeva and others arrived at the same place. Vandiyadeva and his horse were brought to one side of the dilapidated schoolyard. Father! You stay here. We call you when you are called. Do not dream of escaping. No one can enter or leave this forest except those who are used to it, and if you try to do so, you will surely lose your life," said Ravi Dasan. And if I find a way, you'll kill me with a spell. Won't you, sorcerer? Vandiyathevan laughed saying that. Siri, Siri. Good Siri. Saying that, Ravi Dasan also laughed. At that moment, somewhere in the distance, a fox started howling, and hearing it, somewhere nearby, a coyote growled. Vandiyadeva's body shivered, not because of the cold. In the midst of that dense forest, even the bitter wind seemed afraid to enter, why? It didn't even seem to rain that much there. Only a few places on the ground were wet with raindrops. It was tight because there was no wind. By the time he reached there, Vandiyadeva's half-cloth was dry. Only the roll of cloth that was tied around him was wet and he took it and spread it out and dried it on the boulder lying next to him. Vandiyathevan sat on a corner of the same stone and leaned against the school wall. There was only one person nearby to guard him. A short distance away, in a clearing in the middle of the forest, others sat with him in a circle. A man from within the school brought an old throne. In it, a boy called Emperor was made to sit. They kept only two of the lamps and extinguished the others. When the lights were extinguished like that, the smoke that arose surrounded all four sides. Isn't the queen here yet? said one. Should I come after the time? I have also asked to come on the second jamet. Until then, someone sing the praises of the clan. Saman Sambhavan said. I Tumpankari picked up a garment and patted it lightly. Devaralan started singing some song. Vandiyathevan was watching all this from where he was sitting, he was listening. He knows that Vavudakulam is Pandiyakulam. The song rang in his ears like some kind of sad triumph. The sound of the Uduk and the music of the sad song created a thrill in his soul. A few words of the song caught his ear. From them he remembered the history of the great battle that had taken place at that place a hundred years before. Yes, it was there that Varaguna Pandian and Aparajatapalava fought a deadly battle for three days. Ganga King Prithivapatha came to accompany Pallava. Like millions of warriors who died in Apur, Amagaviran also fell dead. The temple built by the police in his memory is now a meeting place for the conspirators. When the Ganga King died, the Pallavar armies began to disperse. The victory of the Pandian army seemed certain. At this time the Chola forces came to the aid of the Pallavas. Vijayalaya Kulan, who had 96 wounds, came to Tirumana leading the force. Four people carried the brave man who had already lost both his legs. Carrying two long swords in both hands, he entered the Pandian army. He kept swinging the two swords around. Wherever he went, the lifeless bodies of Pandian soldiers on both sides piled up like a mountain. The soldiers of the Pallava army, who had been scattered, began to return. Jana Jana Janar. Ten thousand swords flashed in the yellow sun of the evening sun. Dana 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 Ten thousand waves were flowing from the other side with light. Swords and swords clashed. A thousand and ten thousand heads rolled on all four sides. A thousand and ten thousand lifeless bodies fell. The elephants fell and fell. The bodies of dead men and animals floated in a flood of blood. Twenty thousand hawks circled and covered the sky. Thirty thousand foxes howled and ran and surrounded the battlefield. Oh! Oh oh oh! Fifty thousand voices rose together. Don't let go! Catch! Chase! Cut! Punch! A hundred thousand voices rang out like this. Ten thousand Jayabarakas shouted at him. Adam! Adam! Twenty thousand winning associations boom! 
Boom. Boom. They sounded. Ha. 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 Sixty thousand demons laughed. Van Dye the Van woke up startled. He looked around and woke up. As he leaned against the school wall, he realized that he had become teary-eyed for a while. He thought again of the terrible dream he had in that half-sleep. Is it a dream? No. The description of the battlefield in the song sung by Devarala in accordance with Uduk's slogan must have appeared before his mind. At that time Devarala was singing about the defeat of Pallava and Gunga before the Pandya army. The laughter of those listening to it sounded like the laughter of thousands of demons and must have startled Vandiyadeva and made him wake up. The shouting stopped suddenly. Devaralan also stopped the song immediately. A torch light was visible in the distance. It was getting closer and closer. A palanquin followed the lighting of the lamp. The palanquin bearers lowered it. The palax curtains parted. A woman came out from inside. Yes, she is Nandini, Queen of Palvur. But when Vandiyathevan saw her earlier times, she appeared as Mahini, the all-dressed goddess. Now she appeared as the dizzy goddess Yukraturga. Seeing her in this form, Vandiyadeva was struck with horror, a shiver ran through his body. Nandini got down from the palanquin and saw the boy sitting on the throne. She walked looking at him. The boy was also looking at her. Everyone else was staring at the two of them. Behind the throne stood the woman whom he called mother who had run after the boy to the hall. Nandini extended both her arms as the boy came near. The boy looked alternately at her and the woman standing behind him. Are you my mother? She is not, he asked. Yes, Iman. Why does she call me my mother? She's the mother who raised you. Why didn't you raise me? Why didn't you keep me with you? Why is she hiding me somewhere in a mountain cave? Kenmani. To fulfill your father's will. To avenge your father's killers. Yes, I know it. The boy got up and approached Nandini. Nandini hugged him with both her arms and kissed him. The boy also held her tight and hugged her. It seems that he held on to her so that she wouldn't leave him again. However, this scene did not last. Nandini freed herself by forcefully taking his pincers. She made the boy sit on the throne. She again went near the palak. From it she took the sword we have seen before. She looked at the people who had raised her teeth and signaled something. They lifted the palanquin and went some distance away and sat down secretly. Nandini came near the throne again. She placed the knife crosswise on the throne. The boy looked at it with unconcerned interest and asked, May I take this in my hand? He asked. Wait a minute, my eyeball. Said Nandini. Then, she stared at Ravi Dasan and others in a row. Is there no one else here but those who have taken the oath? She asked. No, goddess. Saman Sambhavan said. Looking at Ravi Dasan, Nandini started, Commander. Ravi Dasan smiled. You've got a laugh for today. Who knows what will happen on this day next month? Goddess. We have been waiting so long for that good day to come. Sir. We are but a few. Our emperor is a little child. The Chola kingdom is great, and the Chola's army is immeasurable. If we had been in a hurry, the matter would have been ruined. Because of patience, now the time is near for the success of the matter. Ravi Dasa. Do you have anything to say? Does anyone else here have anything to say? Ravi Dasan looked at the faces of the people there in a row. All were observed to be silent. He said, Devi. We have nothing to say. You have to say. You said that the time for the fulfillment of the vow is near. Please tell us where, how, and through whom it will be fulfilled. Well, I came here to tell you that. That's why I asked all of you to come here without fail. I also made our emperor come, said Nandini. Everyone, including the boy sitting on the throne, was staring at Nandini's face. She added. The Sambuvarayars etc. decided to give a title to Madhurinthagan. 
Kajum Valar Buddha Vikramakesari and Thiruko Valar Malayaman are against it. I hear that Buddha Vikramakesari is coming towards Tanjore with the southern army. I also know that Thiruko Valar is gathering a Malayan force. A war could break out at any moment on either side. Devi. We hear that you are trying hard to prevent such a war. We know that reconciliation talks are going to take place at the Kadampur Sambuvarian mansion. Yes, it was I who made the arrangement. But for what reason won't you be able to guess? I can't. Rani. Elders have said that even Sarveswaran can't find the depth of a woman's heart. How can we? That is impossible for you. I say, no. If this civil strife breaks out in the Chola kingdom before our vow is fulfilled, there is no telling what the result will be. Sundara Chola is still alive, there is one Brahmarayan in love, they will intervene and suppress both parties. Or one party will lose. Even if another party gets stronger, it will be impossible to fulfill our purpose. That is why I have started this peace talk now. We must fulfill our purpose before the fight really starts. After that, there will be no end to the fight between the petty kings of the Chola kingdom. The fight will continue until one party is destroyed. Now you see, peace talk. The reason it started. On hearing this, the faces of all the people standing there showed signs of surprise and excitement. They spoke to each other in soft tones, marveling at the intelligence of the young queen of Palvur. Ravi Dasan too could not help but be surprised. Goddess. We marvel at their extraordinary forethought. We know the concept of the peace talks. But you say the day of the vow's fulfillment is near. Who will conduct it? How? When? He said. Also I have devised this strategy. On the pretense of peace talks, our first enemy has been summoned to the house of the Sambuvarayar of Kadambor, he will certainly be there. We must fulfill our vow there. O perils of the Emperor Virapandaya! Your revenge is at hand. Isn't today Saturday? Next Saturday. Our vow will be fulfilled within a week. All the twenty people who were there simultaneously said aha. Some jumped. The owner of the coat tapped it twice in excitement. The owls that were sleeping in the tree branches woke up and roared and jumped to other branches. Bats flapped their wings and ran. Vandiyadeva's horse shivered. Vandiyathevan also looked up. All that was known was that Nandini was telling the people around her something sensational. None of her words fell on his ears. Ravidasan tamed the enthusiasm of others. Goddess! Your last word has given us immeasurable joy. We rejoice to think that the time has come so near to slay our forefather and avenge him. But who has the privilege of getting revenge? He asked. It is only natural that there should be a rivalry between us. I have brought here Thirukumara Chakravarti of Virapandiyar to decide it in a way that does not harm anyone. Here is Virapandiyara's knife. Whoever of us touches his father's knife and hands it to this little child, he must finish the blame. Others should stand ready to help in the neighborhood. Dot if the undertaker fails, others must come forward and complete it. I will be inside the Kadampur mansion. I Tumpankari will be one of the guards of the fort. We will help the undertaker to enter the palace. Do you agree to all these arrangements? The risk takers looked at each other curiously. Everyone seemed to agree with the arrangement. Ravi Dasan said, what you have said is the right arrangement. We all agree to it. But one more thing. Whoever is responsible for taking the blame, it should be assumed that others listen to what he says. As long as the emperor feels sorry, everyone else should act as if the person who took the blame is the law. Hearing this, Nandini's face broke into a smile. Are you implicating me? She asked. Yes goddess. No exceptions. Said Ravi Dasan. Happiness, now that Ravi Dasan has agreed with all of you. Nandini asked the others. Everyone looked at each other, they hesitated to reply. Some people found the arrangement disagreeable. Saman Samhavan asked, how can that be justified? 
how can we subject the goddess who gives us all help to general rule? He asked. Don't worry about me. I've only lived to avenge the brutal murder of Emperor Virapandaya. I'll be forever a slave to whoever ends that revenge. Said Nandini. Later, Nandini Devi looked at the boy who was listening to all these talks without understanding and said, My eye. This warrior's sword belongs to your father. Take it with your little hand and give it to whomever you like the most. She said. Ravi Dasan came a little closer and said, Emperor, take a good look at us all. Whoever among us you think is brave and brave, give him the touch of this warrior of the Pandya clan. He said. The infant emperor sitting on the throne looked around. Everyone was looking at the emperor's face with uncontrollable excitement and excitement. Everyone's eyes were saying, Give me. Give me. They showed the sin of begging. Ravi Dasan's face and eyes alone said give it to me. That was ordered with authority. After the boy turned around two or three times, he picked up the knife. Unable to lift it, he lifted it. Everyone's excitement peaked. The boy beamed and turned to where Nandini was standing. He gave her the sword saying, Mother. I like you more than anyone else. You must rule the kingdom for me till I grow up.